Hi again, everyone. Sorry about that. I think my connection was poor. My name is Rochelle Sparko, and welcome to Face. <laughs> welcome to Farm Bill Friday on Facebook Live. Um, I am the policy director at the Carolina Farm Stewardship Association. Here with five things that you need to know about the Farm Bill this week, and hopefully our internet connection will stay strong and powerful through the entire presentation. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know about the Farm Bill this week is that we will be talking about the Farm Bill markup. Um, so the first thing that you need to know is that the Agriculture and Nutrition Act of 2018 passed the House Agriculture Committee. Um, the Agriculture and Nutrition Act of 2018 is the name of this year's Farm Bill, and it was up for debate in the House Agriculture Committee this past Wednesday, so just a couple of days ago. After about five hours of debate, the House Agriculture Committee voted to pass the bill, which brings us very quickly to the second thing that you need to know about the Farm Bill this week. The second thing that you need to know is that all of the Republicans on the committee voted for it, and all of the Democrats on the committee voted against it. So the final vote was 26 to 20, 26 Republicans to 20 Democrats. Um, why do we think that this is an important piece of information for you all to know about the Farm Bill this week? Largely because this is not incredibly normal. The Farm Bill is usually a bipartisan piece of legislation. It's a very big bill. We've talked in previous episodes about the fact that it's, or I guess just one previous episode about the fact that the bill is over 600 pages long. Um, so it is typically chock full of things that make just about everybody happy and just about everybody upset. Um, and when there's a balance like that, it usually ends up that folks will vote in favor of it if the things that make them happy are big enough. Um, we've also talked in previous episodes of Farm Bill Friday about the history of the Farm Bill. The Farm Bill dates back to the 1930s. It's relatively unprecedented for a Farm Bill to advance through committee with no support from one of the parties. So this is a pretty big deal um, and is a signal that there's a, a lot about the bill that doesn't satisfy the needs of a lot of different communities across the country. And that brings us to the third thing that we think that you need to know about the Farm Bill markup this week. And that is that many of the programs that support local organic agriculture were gutted. And so it's been a really tough week for local food and organic food around, uh, around the country, thinking about what this might mean for burgeoning local markets, um, for the expansion of organic agriculture, and all of the benefits that flow to communities, rural and urban, as the result of investments that we've made as a nation in local food and organic agriculture. Um, whether it's the development of local economies to the benefit of, uh, for the environment of better agricultural practices or more environmentally conscious agricultural practices, um, to increased food access for communities uh, across the country, we have a lot of worries about the fact that, that all of these programs were gutted. Um, we talked last week a little bit about what some of them are. And again, uh, in case folks weren't watching last week, some of those programs include the Value Added Producer Grant, which is a grant to farmers who want to add value to their products in some way, whether that's by turning fruits into jellies or cucumbers into pickles, um, or they want to add value by improving the packaging that they can use for, say, their mushroom products um, or their logo marketing, their marketing strategy. And um, we also saw the um, local food promotion program and the farmers market nutrition, uh, the farmers market promotion program both eliminated from the farm bill, um, the draft of the farm bill that's now uh, passed the House Agriculture Committee. Both of those grant programs have helped um, foster food businesses in North and South Carolina, improving local food infrastructure, improving access to local food and, and organic food across both states. So we're really disappointed to see that and see the elimination of those programs or the possible elimination of those programs as a really big problem um, for the cultivation of a local food movement in both states. So what do we do next? <laughs> What's happening? It brings us to the fourth thing that you need to know about the Farm Bill this week, and that is that the next step is that the bill will be debated on the House floor. Uh, so from the House Agriculture Committee, 
the bill moves directly to the house floor. What is the house floor? Um, it's the fancy room that you see when you watch C-SPAN. I'm sure all of you have done that. <laughs> um, so it's the big room where all of the members of the House of Representatives fit in and they will debate and vote on the Agriculture and Nutrition Act of 2018 at some point, possibly in the near future. We've heard that the earliest that the bill will be um, up for debate on the House floor is May 9th. So we're definitely keeping an eye on that, but there are some other important pieces of legislation that need to be passed um, before they'll have time to take up the Farm Bill. And so it's entirely possible that that deadline will get moved, or not deadline, but that date, that target date will get moved out further into the spring or even out into the summer. Um, so this House bill uh, is not, it's not over yet, guys. <laughs> um, which brings us to issue number five, or the fifth thing that you need to know about the Farm Bill this week, which is Please stay tuned with CFSA's action alerts between now and the House vote and even after the House vote. Um, you can do that, I'm gonna zoom in for you, by going to bit.ly backslash AXN alerts. And the link will be down in the comments for you. Um, I can't impress upon you enough how very bad this bill is and how disappointed we are at CFSA in, in this bill right now. We do need everybody who cares about local food, who cares about their farmers, um, to be making phone calls and sending emails. Um, for those of you who are already signed up for our action alerts earlier this week before the debate started on Wednesday morning in the House Agriculture Committee, we did send out an action alert to our North Carolina-based folks to encourage them to make phone calls to the two members of the Agriculture Committee who live here um, and represent districts here. Now that the bill's headed to the House floor, Everybody can call, and everybody should be calling. Everyone should call their member of uh, the House of Representatives and impress upon them the importance of programs like the Value Added Producer Grant, like the Farmers Market Promotion Program, like the Local Food Promotion Program and the Organic Certification Cost Share Program, as well as the importance of conservation programs like the Conservation Stewardship Program, which was also removed from uh, the 2018 Farm Bill. Um, there's so much to talk about in this bill. And we'll dive into it some in future weeks to give you guys a better sense of exactly what happens um, to the programs that we care about and to the policies that we care about as a result of the House version of this bill, at least at this time. Because um, I have a few minutes. I also wanna bring up for you all an issue that we're watching fairly closely um, to learn more about its impact, but I want it on y'all's radar. Um, Iowa Congressman Steve King um, amended the Farm Bill. Uh, his colleagues voted to include the amendment that he proposed to the Farm Bill. Um, and that, that amendment is from a bill that he introduced, a marker bill, for those of you who've been following along with all of these episodes of Farm Bill Friday. He introduced a marker bill called the Protect Interstate Commerce Act, and that act was moved into the Farm Bill itself, um, and so will be a part of the debate on the House floor. The Protect Interstate Commerce Act is an amendment to the Farm Bill that will make it more difficult, possibly impossible, for individual states to make decisions about food and agriculture, um, how to regulate food and agriculture in their states, particularly in the event that there's a, a component of interstate commerce involved. And so what does that possibly mean for the Carolinas? Um, there are a couple of things that I'm kind of concerned about and looking into, and I'd like you guys to think about this too. Um, we do regulate, in North Carolina at least, um, the movement of nursery plants because there are parts of the state that have fire ants and parts of the state that do not. And fire ants can be really devastating both to homeowners but also to farmers. And we're trying to control the spread of those ants. Um, it's possible that this act will make it impossible or more difficult for us to keep products that may be exposed to maybe carrying fire ants into areas in, in North Carolina that do not currently have fire ants. That's bad news for ag, it's bad news for people, it's bad news for ground nesting birds. There's lots of reasons why we want to keep fire ants away. Um, another thing that we do in the Carolinas is we control the movement of firewood. Um, we have infestations of weird bugs, I could get into the names of them, um, that are killing trees, particularly in the western part of the state. And so in an effort to keep those moths away from other parts of the state that don't currently have them, we try to control 
where firewood gets moved. Um, and so if it's coming from a place that is infested with those bugs, we don't allow that firewood into places that don't currently have it. Um, so just a couple of, exam of examples that aren't maybe directly agriculture related um, to highlight why a bill like, uh, a marker bill like Congressman King's may be problematic here in the Carolinas, aside from any impact it may have on um, whether or not people in Iowa have to raise chickens outside of battery cages in order to sell eggs to people in California, which I think is the problem that he's trying to solve. Um, you know, is, is forcing California to, to be unable to regulate the cage size for, for layers. Um, so a weird little tidbit for you guys. I hope you'll think about that Protect Interstate Commerce Act. Encourage your member of the House of Representatives to remove that, uh, file an amendment to remove that piece of the bill um, when that bill's up on the House floor. And please do talk with them absolutely about the programs um, that help local farmers and organic farmers across the Carolinas to succeed in their business enterprises. Um, next week, you all will have Farm Bill Friday on Facebook Live with another member of the policy team at CFSA because I will be at a conference in Cincinnati. Um, so I encourage you all to enthusi enthusiastically welcome Katie Wellborn, who is our South Carolina policy coordinator, when she speaks with you all next week about five things that you need to know about the Farm Bill. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I look forward to seeing you again in two weeks and hope that you all will check in with Katie next Friday. Bye y'all.